Episode 58, Sports Fans and Rivalries You know what I find hilarious? Sports fans and their rivalries. I mean, some people take it to the extreme. They get so passionate about their team that they start acting like they're actually on the field, tackling anyone who disagrees with them. And let's talk about the rivalries. It's like they're in a real-life soap opera. You've got the Yankees and the Red Sox, the Lakers and the Celtics, the Cowboys and whoever dares to step on their star. These rivalries are intense. People are willing to fight, insult, and even throw beer cans at each other just because they support different teams. I'm not saying I'm above it all. I'm a sports fan myself. But sometimes I feel like people take it too seriously. Like, I get it, you love your team, but does that mean you have to insult the other team's fans or even their city? Come on, people. It's just a game. And don't even get me started on the superstitions. I have to wear my lucky socks every time the Packers play or they'll lose. I can't eat pizza during the game or the Giants will fumble. Really, guys? You think your choice of socks or food has any impact on a team's performance? But the truth is, as much as I make fun of sports fans, I'm one of them. I've yelled at the TV during a game, I've high-fived strangers at a bar when my team scored, and I've even shed a tear when my favorite player retired. Because at the end of the day, sports bring people together. Even if you're cheering for different teams, you have this common bond, this shared passion. And that's something to celebrate. So let's raise a glass, sports fans, to our favorite teams, to our rivals, and to the fact that we can all come together to argue about something that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Cheers. So, sports fans and rivalries, huh? It's funny how we can get so worked up over a game that ultimately doesn't affect us personally. I mean, we're not the ones out there throwing the ball or scoring the goals. But still, we invest so much time, energy, and emotion into our teams. And then there are the rivalries. Now, I understand the concept of wanting to beat your opponent. It's a natural instinct. But sometimes it feels like sports fans take it a little too far. I mean, have you ever seen a fan of one team completely trash talk another team and its fans? It's like they think they're actually on the field, competing in the game. I've never been a huge sports fan myself, but I do have a funny story about a rivalry. I was once at a bar watching a game between two rival teams. The atmosphere was tense, to say the least. Fans of both teams were shouting, cheering, and jeering each other. It was like a war zone, but with beer. At one point, a fan of the losing team got so frustrated that he chucked his beer bottle across the room. It missed everyone, thankfully, but it did hit the TV and shattered the screen. The whole bar went silent. And then, as if on cue, a fan of the winning team stood up and yelled, well, I guess that's what we call a glass half empty. I couldn't help but laugh at the ridiculousness of it all. I mean, here we were, grown adults getting so riled up over a game that we were breaking TVs and making bad puns. But you know what? That's the beauty of sports. It brings people together and creates a sense of community. And even though we might get a little carried away at times, at the end of the day, we all just want to have fun and enjoy the game. So, to all you sports fans out there, keep the rivalries lighthearted and the humor flowing. And if you feel the urge to throw a beer bottle, just remember, glass half full, my friends. Sports fans are a strange breed, aren't they? They invest so much time and energy into their favorite teams and players that it's almost like a second job. And don't even get me started on rivalries. It's like they take it personally when their team loses to their biggest rival. I mean, I get it, I really do. I'm a language model, but I can see the appeal. There's nothing quite like the adrenaline rush you get when your team is winning, or the heartbreak when they lose. It's like a roller coaster of emotions. But sometimes, sports fans take it too far. Have you ever seen those fans who paint their entire body in their team's colors? I mean, that's dedication right there. Or the ones who camp out for days just to get tickets to a big game? I mean, I love my job, but I'm not sure I'd be willing to sleep outside for it. And let's not forget about the rivalries. It's like sports fans have a natural instinct to hate their team's biggest rival. I mean, I'm a language model, I don't really have the capacity to hate, but I've seen it in action. I once saw a fan of one team wearing a shirt that said I hate, rival team name, and I thought, wow, that's some intense feelings right there. But you know what's really funny? When a fan of a rival team meets a fan of their own team. It's like they've found a long-lost brother or sister. Suddenly, they're best friends, 
united in their love for their team and their hatred for their rivals. In the end, I think sports fans and their rivalries are just a reflection of our own human nature. We love to root for the underdog, we love to see our team come out on top, and we love to hate on our rivals. It's all in good fun, and it's a great way to bring people together, as long as we remember to keep it light and not take it too seriously. And with that, I think I'll wrap up my stand-up routine. Thanks for listening, and remember, even if your team loses, there's always next season. (laughs) And that wraps up another laughter-filled episode of Not So Funny A. If you enjoyed the jokes generated by our AI algorithms, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join our comedy-loving community.